Have you ever set a clear goal, put your head down and worked hard to achieve it, yet still failed? You may have even thought, if I had just worked a little harder, or if I had just focused a little more on my goal, I might have been successful. But actually, it may have been just the opposite. You may have focused too much on your goal. I first realized this was possible playing soccer as a child. If you've ever watched little children play, you'll notice they tend to bunch up and chase the ball. As a child, I certainly did. And whenever I did get the ball, I put my blinders on and went straight at the goal. I was focused, I was determined to score. But this still doesn't change the fact that this isn't the best way to score. Instead, whenever you lack a clear path to the goal, you should pass the ball to someone else. Eventually, the ball will wind up at the feet of someone that does have a clear path, and they can go straight at the goal. 90% of the time, there is no clear path to the goal in soccer, and what makes a player great is what they do in these moments. Now I know every one of you has important goals, and often there is no clear path to achieving them. What should we do in these moments? Believe it or not, we can learn a thing or two from robots. Kenneth Stanley and Joel Lehman performed research where they trained two robots to solve a maze. The first robot was programmed with one thing in mind, get to the end of the maze. So I'll call him Goal Driven. Now the other robot was programmed to just try different things. The more different, the better. And so I'll call her Explorer. Let's check out the results in this video. The green spot is the end of the maze, and each blinking light is where the robot wound up at the end of a trial run. Now, notice how the goal-driven robot stuck in this corner of the maze, while Explorer branches out and finds her way around the maze. At this point, she is almost there. And finally, she scores. Meanwhile, the poor goal-driven robot's just beating its head against a wall. But I can feel sorry for him, because watching him reminds me of playing soccer as a child. The goal always seemed to be within reach, if not for those pesky other children that got in my way. What five-year-old me and the goal-driven robot share in common is that neither of us were willing to explore paths that seemed to lead away from our goal. Meanwhile, Explorer discovers all of the paths and intersections in the maze because she has no concerns with where those paths might or might not lead. She simply sees a new avenue and in her curiosity must explore that path. In a maze, new paths and intersections are new opportunities. Therefore, open-ended exploration is the best way to discover new opportunities, or as I like to call them, stepping stones. Now come back in time with me for a moment. I want you to imagine you're living 150 years ago and someone comes to you and asks you to build a device that can perform calculations automatically. They then proceed to explain in detail all of the features of a modern computer, and you are given unlimited resources to build the device. How do you do it? What goals are important to solving this problem from the perspective of the mid-1800s? Hold on to that thought for a moment. In the 1880s, William Hammer added an extra electrode to the light bulb and he noticed something rather peculiar. Current only flowed in one direction, from the heated filament of the bulb to the extra electrode. This effect would later be harnessed to create vacuum tubes. Without vacuum tubes, we never could have built the first computer. Without computers, we would still have to go to libraries to read books, whatever that means. <laughs> Thankfully, William Hammer decided to experiment with light bulbs, but not because he was trying to invent the computer. More to the point, how many of you were thinking about experimenting with light bulbs? Just imagine if society had devoted all of its time and effort towards building the modern computer. We might have deemed William Hammer's exploratory research with light bulbs worthless. As a result, we might have never discovered the vacuum tube, a seemingly unrelated but crucial stepping stone to modern computers. Now the computer is just one of many breakthroughs born of seemingly unrelated discoveries which is why we must engage in open-ended exploration. But that's not enough, because open-ended exploration isn't perfect. Let's go back to the maze example for a moment. The astute observer noticed a flaw in Explorer's attempts to solve the maze. Once she rounded that final corner and had the goal in sight, 
She moved left, right, forwards, and backwards, but not straight at the goal. Once you have a clear shot, for heaven's sake, shoot the ball. The power of the goal-driven process is to take advantage of the opportunities we create. The stepping stones we find are virtually meaningless without this final step. But we will fail to achieve our goals without the necessary stepping stones. This is why we must engage in both open-ended exploration and goal-driven work. The best teams have players that create opportunities and players that score. Now I'm here today because I'm afraid that we focus too much on scoring and not enough on exploring. Now we can all agree that research into cancer is very important, but many people would suggest that we defund research into black holes or abandon the manned space program. These people would have us trapped at the dead end of the maze with a goal-driven robot. However, I empathize with these people because I was once one of them. You see, I have what my brother calls a hero complex. I want to change the world and make it better, but it's not for entirely selfless reasons. I want my life to mean something. So I wanted to make an impact, and I thought if I was a doctor, I could save lives, but I was cursed with this infectious curiosity. Caught like light in a black hole, I couldn't escape my desire to study math and physics. As a last-ditch effort, I thought, I could lead humanity to the stars if I worked for NASA. <laughs> However, I inevitably fell prey to physics graduate school, and now I study exotons. What are exotons? Trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> Still clinging to my need to be the hero, I decided to study exotons because I, wanted to, because I thought they had a potential to lead to future technology. In fact, I was inspired to give this talk because I wanted to convince you that research into black holes was important based on its potential to lead to technology. Ironically, I realized I have no idea if or how black holes will lead to technology or whether my life will have a meaningful impact or not. In fact, I realized the majority of society's most important goals lack a clear path to success. For example, how will we cure cancer and how will we address climate change? However, there is no need to be afraid in the face of this uncertainty, because all we have to do is explore. Thank you. <laughs>